This morning we have with us Sally Kama, who will be sharing with us on the topic Mindfulness, What It Is Not. Sally graduated with a bachelor's degree in accountancy from UPM in 1998. After graduation, she trained as an auditor and worked under the Malaysian Financial System Control Department in Bank Nagara. She started full-time monastic life at the Luminary Temple, Chiai, Taiwan in 2001 and was ordained in 2002 under the Chinese Mayana tradition at Santau Temple in Taipei City. Sally graduated from the Luminary Buddhist Institute Chai Taiwan and stayed in Taiwan for six and a half years. She then spent the next 12 years learning Samatha and Vipassana systematically in Myanmar under the Pa'au Sayadaw group. Since returning to Malaysia in 2020 during the MCO lockdown, Sally has been staying at several places for self-retreat. She is currently residing at the Bodhi Hut Sanctuary in Penang. Let us put our palms together and welcome Saleh to deliver her talk. Over to you, Saleh. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, before we start our Dharma talk, normally I will uh, invite all the Taiwas come to listen Dharma. So. Please just pay attention. Please calm down our mind and just listen my chanting, okay? Samantha Chakawale Suatra Gachantu Devata Satama Muni Rajasa Sunantu Sakamukadam. May the deities of the world come here and listen to the Dharma which leads to Nibbana. Dhamma samana kalo ayam padanta. Dhamma samana kalo ayam padanta. Dhamma samana kalo ayam padanta. So now is the time for listening to the Dhamma. So now is the time for listening to the Dhamma. So now is the time for listening to the Dhamma. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambodasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato. Sama Sambodasa Namo Tasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambodasa Good morning everyone. Good morning everyone from Malaysia and from other country. And I'm Kama now stay at Penang Body Hut and Quite a long time I not come back to Malaysia. After 20 years, uh, I stay abroad to searching for Dharma. Mm. So today I'm very happy invited by uh, BGF. BGF is an organization that uh, we always uh, visit us during our university time with uh, BGF hymns, it's very famous. And so I'm very, today I feel grateful, invited by PGF to have this Dharma talk. So today I would like to share with all is mindfulness. Uh, nowadays we have so many talk and so many course teaching mindfulness. Uh, some is um, mindfulness meditation, some is mindfulness in walking, meditation or mindfulness in breathing and mindfulness cure our disease and mindfulness uh, cure our sickness. So, uh, so many, so many mindfulness. Actually, this mindfulness, mindfulness in the Pali word is sati. Sati is come from the Buddha teaching is uh, we always heard about sama sati 
or sati patana. Sama sati or sati patana, this is also sati. So in English word, we translate to mindfulness. Huh. But what is the exact meaning of sati? So today I would like to introduce to all about uh, this Buddha teaching of mindfulness uh, using different sutta, especially from Mahasati Patana. In the Mahasati Patana, the Buddha used Sati and Sati Patana, the foundation of mindfulness. So, if we understand what is, what is the foundation of mindfulness, then we can understand what is not mindfulness, and we can. We can check ourselves uh, whether we are in mindfulness conditions in our daily life, in our meditation. Even though I've seen uh, so many meditators, they say they are practicing mindfulness of breathing. In Pali, we say anapanasati. Anapanasati is breath in, breathing in and breathing out. Anapana. Breathe in and breathe out. Sati is mindfulness. Mindfulness on breathe, breathe and breathe, watching your breathing and breathe out. Even though in the meditation, I have seen so many meditators. They meditate diligently, but they are not mindful. So when we practice Dharma, we say we are using consume a lot of time to practice Dharma, to practice meditation. But if we are not practice with mindfulness, then it's wasting of time. Some when I say a broadside meditator, they may say they may spend more than five years, six years, seven years, eight years, ten years for their retreat, long retreat. And some may spend whole life for meditation retreat just to practice uh, mindfulness. My, uh, my, just to want to know uh, Dharma deeply. But if we don't know how to cultivate our mind with mindfulness, we may lose our time wasting our whole life to practice Dharma. So today I just uh, today talk is only one hour. So just uh, beginning very uh, roughly, I'll introduce to all what is mindfulness. Uh, so want to know this mindfulness is essence teachings of Buddha. If we understand mindfulness, we almost understand the all Buddha teaching. And mindfulness is. Um, very close to negligence also, Appamaga Sampadeta, we always say. Uh, in, if we understand mindfulness, we almost understand the all Buddha teaching. So it is very important for us to know mindfulness before we step in to start Sila Samadhi Panya. Even uh, practicing Sila, the to guard our body, conduct speech and mind, uh, body and speech. Also, we can take sila without mindfulness. So, okay, let us uh, come to see the sutta. This is from Mahasati Patana Sutta. Okay, the next slide, Chattaro Sati Patana. Chattaro Pati Sati Patana Chattaro is for. Sati is mindfulness, patana is foundation. So to know, want to know more about mindfulness, then we have to know the foundation of mindfulness. Okay? I will chant this sutta. Ekaya no ayam bikkawe Mego satanam visutiya Soka pari dewanam samati kamaya. Dukkha domanasam atta kamaya. 
Naya sati kamaya nibana sa sati kriya ya. Yadi dan chataro sati patana. Katame chataro ida bika wei. Biko kaye kaya no pasi wi harati. Atapi sampajano sati ma. Vineya loke abijado manasa. Vedana su vedana no pasi wi harati. Atapi sampajano sati ma. Vineya loke abhijya domana san. Chete chitta no pasi viharati. Atapi sampajya no sati ma. Vineya loke abhijya domana san. Dame so dama no pasti viharati. Atapi sampaja no sati ma. Vineya loke abhijya domana san. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. The first paragraph of the Mahasati Patanana I mentioned about Chattaro Sati Patana, the four foundation of mindfulness. In the first, first paragraph, Bodha already mentions what is the purpose we practice mindfulness. We must know what is the purpose we practice mindfulness. What is the purpose we practice Dhamma? What is the purpose we practice um, meditation? Or what is the purpose we open, we establish a Buddhist center, want to introduce Dhamma to the world, then in the Satipatthana Sutta, in the first paragraph, Buddha already mentioned, mindfulness, what's the purpose we practice mindfulness? Okay, let us see the next slide. Okay, the next one, purpose of the mindfulness, the first one, the Buddha, when Buddha mentioned about mindfulness, the first one is Meko Satanam Visuti Yang. Meko is the path. Satanam. Satanam is the being, all the, all the being. Visuti Yang to purify all the beings. So don't forget when we practice meditation or practice ma, uh, uh, Dhamma or taking five precepts. We are doing all this for the purifi purification of ourselves, to purify our mind. And in the meditation of, for example, the Anapanasati, I have seen so many meditators when they practice Anapanasati, uh, join the retreat, but they are mindful of lova craving. I want to achieve high attainment during this retreat. I would like to attend first jhana within first month, and I will do better than others. All this is defilement mice. Then you are very far from purification. That's why when we practice Dharma, we cannot get the happiness and peaceful mind. So this is the purpose of mindfulness. If we are practicing Dharma without the right intention, then we will bring the result is suffering result. Okay. If we practice the meditation or practice a Dhamma or become a Buddhist with wrong intention, without mindfulness, then we won't become a 
good Buddhists, uh, we cannot get the real teaching of Buddha. So in the first paragraph, Buddha already mentioned, make go satanam visuddhiya, for the purification of all beings. And then the next one, Soka paridevanam samati kamaya, for the overcoming of sorrow and lamentation. Some meditators, when they join retreat, I ask them, okay, after this retreat, what do you feel? They feel, ah, Sally, I'm very upset now. This retreat, I have no progress. And I'm so disappointed um, because uh, the meditator, they sit beside me, uh, keep noisy and uh, the organizations uh, is not well uh, prepared for us. So I feel I'm wasting of time. Then this is the result of mindfulness because you are not practicing with mindfulness. So your result is suffering, is sorrow. So please remember all the practices of mindfulness is for the overcoming of sorrow and lamentation. If we practice uh, from some teacher or from any method of mindfulness method, then our result is uh, unhappy, upset, sorrow, angry. Then we are not practicing mindfulness. So please aware about this. And the next one, Dukkha Dhammanasam Atangama. Yeah. Why we practice Dhamma? Why we practice mindfulness? Mindfulness can help us extinguish of suffering and grief. This time I come back to Malaysia after 20 years, and then I met some Buddhist friends, uh, some, some from the PBUBM from Prasatan Buddhist UPM from some my junior, some my senior, and then they met me. They say, Oh Sally. After 20 years become a Buddhist, I feel I have no progress. I feel I'm still the same. I still I not solve my problem also. I'm not happy with my job also. I'm not happy with my family also. And then I say, You are Buddhist. Why don't you practice Dhamma? Why don't you use Dhamma to solve your problem? And then they say, I don't know how, eh? don't know how to start. Eh? Huh, we don't know. I know I am Buddhist. I'm taking five percent. I just now, uh, Bobby, lead all of you to chant Buddham Saranam Gachami, Dhammam Saranam Gachami, Sankham Saranam Gachami. So, all of you know how to chant this. Gachami means we go the direction to the Buddha. Gachami means I, I go to the direction of Buddha. Buddha saranam gachami, I follow Buddha. And then I follow Dhamma, and then I follow Sankha. But I don't know how to follow. And then most of them say, don't know, le. we don't know how to practice Dhamma. Le. After 10 years, also the same. After 20 years, also the same. <laughs> Until die, also the same. Then we not really know what is Dhamma. Even we don't listen, some they join a lot of activities. Some, some devotees, I ask them, oh, how long you stay in Penang? They say, oh, I stay in Penang for... Since I was young, then since you was young, you visit many temple. Yes, uh, Sally, I visit this temple, this temple, this temple, this temple. Oh, all, all temples he visited. And then how? Then what? What you learn from all monastery, from all the sufu, all the Sally, all the monk, all the bante. Uh, I learned this though. I didn't let though. And then then sometimes I ask them. Then what is Dharma? Can you explain to me what is Dharma? And then they say, Dharma, no, no, la, but we know something good. La. So we are not 
really put effort to know what is Dhamma. That's why we just um, have certain faith, but we have no wisdom. We have certain level of faith, sada, so we come become a Buddhist, but we don't know practically how to do. It seems like many people they graduated from university, uh, maybe from engineering, from what, from uh, science, but they don't know practically. They don't know how to do practically how to change their mind they don't know have practically how to use wise attention they don't know practically how to use mindfulness in every mind moment from the early morning until night time they don't know and some they even they blame each other they go to the monastery oh i do more you do less uh, all these things I do, you don't do. Uh, then if we have mindfulness to do all the Dharma as a Dharma workers, as a meditator, or at home also, we know how to change our mind, wise attention in every event, in every circumstances, in with anyone we make, we know how to adjust our mind to mindfulness, then this is the practice of Dhamma. If the Dhamma is only can apply in meditation hall only, then I say this is not Dhamma. If the Dhamma is only when I close my eye, I watch my breath, and this is meditation, and this is practicing of Dharma. Then I say, what you are practicing is not Dharma, because after you finish one sitting, you don't know how to live your life. Then this is not mindfulness. It will be something wrong with your practice, so you need to adjust your mind. Okay? So the next one, the Buddha say, Na yasa atikamaya or working on the path of truth. Truth, adhikamaya, to see the truth. Mindfulness, mindfulness, the goal of mindfulness is what? to see the truth. To see the truth is the essential practice of Buddhism. In any traditions, in any tradition from, from Thailand, from, from, from Myanmar or from China or from Taiwan, all the purpose, all the purpose of teachings is to see the truth. Huh? To see the truth. Why we say truth? Because the all the beings they suffer because they see untrue. That's why in the Buddha teaching say, for walking on the path of truth, it should be applied to all Buddhism from any place, any place, any Buddhist, they cannot far from truth. All our practice is for walking on the path of truth because we are need a lot of ignorance. Avijja, the Buddha say, the two main diseases of all beings, for all beings in the samsara, we round and round in the samsara. Two main diseases is ignorance and tanha, avijja and tanha. Why avijja, why tanha? Because we don't see the truth. This is the problem. We always see untruth. And because of seeing untruth, we have a we have full of wrong view, mitjaditi in our mind. All our mental process is untruth, seeing untruth, and all our mental process is all is mitjaditi, wrong view, wrong view. Everything we see is wrong view. This is the main problem. And because we see 
and truth, so in the world is full of suffering. Within family member quarreling, within uh, house and house, this house and neighbor also fighting with the country and country in the Sutta said, within country and country also fighting. Why? Because we see untruth. This is the main disease of all beings. And we have not enough mindful. We are not really practicing the real teaching of the Buddha. So this is the main cause, the main roots of the suffering of the world. We say, no, no, we know, we know. Since we're young, we study Buddhism, we know we must see the truth, but we say only, but in our mind, every day we see untrue. When we see our wife, our husband, our son, our daughter, all uh, we see untrue because we see people, san dasana, we say dasana. Dasana is seeing. The Buddha was used dasana, we seeing, we see, we see the outside world, we see internal, we see external, we see our mother, our father, all with the wrong view, Mecha did it with the wrong view. Why? Because uh, all our mind is associated with uh, avijja, ignorance. So this is the purpose of practicing mindfulness. If we can mindful enough, we really practice Buddha teaching, we see the truth, then we have no anger. We have no loba. Loba is craving my anger, huh? those signs anger. Some meditator in last uh, last few weeks, one meditator asked me, theoretically, I know, but when I, every time when I meet this person, my mind is full of anger. Yes, because we are not mindful enough and because we don't see the truth. If we mindful enough, we every time we see the truth, no one can harm you. No one can make us anger and you craving to no one also. This is the Buddha teaching. And Buddha says, who have full mindfulness in the world? When we remove all the avijja, the person have no avijja, no ignorance. This person is mindfulness, 100%, we say 100% mindfulness. So, Nibbana Sasachi Kriya, for the realization of Nibbana. So every day we say, uh, we want to attend Nibbana, may you attend Nibbana, 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 Nibbana. We wish other people to attend Nibbana and what is Nibbana and how to attend Nibbana. Okay. If we say we want to attend Nibbana, then we have to know how, step by step, how to attend Nibbana. So this is the purpose to practice mindfulness. So let us see the next slide. The next one is Samasati. Samasati, Sati, also mindfulness, Sama is, the, in English word here, we translate right, right mindfulness. Actually, Sama, uh, we can say balancing, uh, correct, uh, uh, right way, right way of sati. This also from Mahasati Patana. Katama jabika we samasati. Eda bika we biku. Kaye kaya no pasi viharati. Atapi 
Vinaya loke abija domana sa. Chite chita no passe we harati. Atapi sampaja no sate ma. Vinaya loke abija domana sa. Dame so dama no passe we harati. Atape sampaja no sate ma. Vinaya loke abija domana sa. Aya muchati bikawe sama sate. So do you see the word sati, satima, satima, and some say their name is satima. Satima actually ma is full of sati, full of mindfulness. Satima, this person is satima. The Buddha say atta pi sampa jano satima. If we are practicing mindfulness, we neya loke abhija domana sam. Okay, with the next slide, we see what is the meaning. We neya loke abhija satima. We neya loke abhija domana sam. Remove the craving and aversions toward the world. Who are practicing mindfulness? He is remove craving and aversion toward the world. We are not craving the world. What is the world? Then we say, what is the world? The world means internal world, external world, uh, living being, unliving being, all this is world. And in the in the Buddha, in the Sutta, uh, Buddha mentions in Anatta Lakana Sutta. Anatta Lakana. The past, the present, future, also the world. We have the past. Yesterday is past. This is yesterday world. Present also world. In the future also world. Internal ourself is world, external, living being, unliving being. Because for mindfulness, the, the object of mindfulness is should be cover the whole world. Then we can only that we can liberate it from the world. This mindfulness to remove the craving because sometimes we crave yesterday, the past, some is present, some is the future. Sometimes our craving is our self, ourself. Sometimes our craving is external thing, external thing as our son and daughter and wife and husband or relative. This is external craving. And somebody they more attached in living beings, they have no feeling with the uh, unliving being, but some, uh, some people, they attach to non-living being. Uh, they like gold, they like silver, they like lime, they very attached to their house, very attached to their car. All is world. All this we call world. So, the result after practicing right mindfulness, samasati, we remove the craving and aversions toward the world. Then we can, then only that we can free from suffering. Otherwise, we still in the suffering of the world life by life after this life and then another life continue again. So how important to know about right mindfulness, to understand about mindfulness. Uh, just uh, brief introduce the main point the Buddha say, we neya loke abhija domanasam. So the result is remove craving and aversion toward the world. And someone they may ask me, I know we want to uh, liberate from the world, 
we have to remove the craving. Uh, we have to free from suffering, but I still not understand what is mindfulness. <laughs> so to understand one Dharma is not easy. Huh? Only one word, sati. Sati, we can practice the whole life. Only one Dharma. One Dharma, sati, we can, we can learn the whole life. And because we have to need uh, to practice it and to apply in our mind, in our mental process, because our mind, our habit is around long the samsara, we already cultivate so many bad habits. So when we want to start mindfulness, actually, um, we feel difficult to change our habit, but it's still possible. It's still possible. So uh, some meditator, they asked me, um, I still don't know what is mindfulness, what is that day. So normally um, in a Buddha teaching, when Buddha want to introduce one Dhamma, for example, Sati, Viriya, or Panya, and what is Panya? What is wisdom? Then the basic four ways, the basic four ways to understand Dhamma, we can use this method. Huh? I'll show the next slide we see. Next one, the four ways to understand mindfulness. Not only mindfulness in any Dharma, in any Dharma when we want to uh, know, to understand this Dharma, we can use these four ways. A very simple example. If you want to tell uh, a child, maybe four years old child, what is elephant? You say, um, maybe the, the tail is long, the, the leg is short, uh, the body is very big. You have to say every angle, then they can catch the picture, what is the elephant. So the same also in the Dhamma, we use the Lakkana, Rasa, Pacho, Patana, Padatana. Lakkana means a characteristic. What is the characteristic of this Dhamma? Rasa means uh, what's the function? When we when we know uh, we want to know this Dhamma, what's the function? You say uh, if you want to say wisdom, panya, what's the function of panya? What's the function of sati? What's the function of ignorance, avijja? What is the functions? What's the function of tanha cravings? Huh. Sometimes we have to memorize in our mind all this Dhamma. Then we always, uh, we are more professional in learning Dhamma. Uh, when people ask you, what is a Sada? You say Sada. What is a Sada? What is the function of Sada? Sing Singa, uh, confidence. What's the function of Sada? What's the function of Spanya? What's the function of Viriya? Viriya, put effort. Um, why this is very important to understand Dharma in Dharma way. When we understand Dharma in Dharma way, use the Dharma to understand Dharma. Okay, please remember. When we learn Dharma, we must use Dharma to understand Dharma. Or we use our practical experience because all Dharma happen in our mental process and in the external world, in internal world, in the past, present, and future. That's why we say Buddha know everything. Buddha know the Dhamma. Buddha know everything. We understand Dhamma from Dhamma. Lakana rasa pachu patana padatana. We understand Dhamma from Dhamma. We are not understanding Dhamma from the world. Okay, please remember this. This is very important. Because nowadays, uh, many translations of Dhamma. During the Buddha time, Buddha using uh, the time is like uh, Sati, Samasati, Satipatthana, but 
nowadays in the modern world, the Buddha teaching already translated in many language. In many language and every, every language they have their own uh, language, their meaning. We cannot totally find equal meaning exactly. This is this. Cannot, cannot. Impossible. Is for example, it's very easy. When I say um this is apple, okay, this is apple, A P P L E, this is apple. And then can you find one another apple to mention to describe this apple? It's impossible because it's not similar thing. You cannot find the similar two things similar in the world. It's impossible. In, even two person also impossible. So the Dharma, we only can explain Dharma by Dharma. We don't explain Dharma by word, by other language. To understand by other, other language, then the meaning is limited. The limiting is limited and we cannot know the true teaching of Dhamma, the true meaning of Dhamma. Huh? For example, if you find the section dictionary, what is mindfulness? We go to check the dictionary, what is meditations? No word can say about Kamatana, the yoga. Yoga, yoga is practiced during the Buddha time, what is practicing meditation? Is it meditation like nowadays? No. No. That's why we are discussing why nowadays can, we still can see Sotapan because we are not putting practice Buddha teaching, then we cannot see Sotapan, we cannot see Arahan. Because we practice using our ideal. We are not practicing using Buddha ideals. We know, not spend the time to know Buddha ideals. This is the main cause. Lah, huh? So to understand mindfulness, the sati, we use the lakana rasa pachu patana padatana to understand dhamma too. Dhamma. So the first one, lakana, we see the first one, lakana. The next slide. Lakana, the next one, huh? Apilapana lakana, mindfulness. Apilapana lakana. Okay. Not floating away from the object with wholesome mind. Actually, sati is a uh, mind process. Is a uh, sati is one one of the jitasika in our mental process. What is the jitasika? Jitasika is mental factor. Sati is mental factor, and sati is mental factor. And then sati is my process, is a uh, me mentality, it's not materiality. Huh? In, the, in the Buddha teaching, we say uh, two main area is nama and rupa. Rupa is materiality. Rupa is, for example, you see me, you see my clothes, you see my appearance, you see my hand, this is rupa. Huh? And now you can touch the handphone. This is rupa. This is materiality. All we can touch, we can see, we can uh, break also, we can feel also, we can touch also. This is rupa. And rupa is uh, very easy to spoil because all the rupa is from four elements. From four elements. And sati, sati is me mentality. Sati is mentality. For example, today you say, oh, today my son is happy. Today my daughter is sad. What is sad? What is happy? You, can you catch happy? Can you uh, give me one cup of happy hand? Happiness, a cup of happiness. Can you offer me a cup of sadness? Can you give me all your sadness to me? Uh, most of the time, the devotee come to see me. They have a lot of sorrowness, a lot of sadness. Uh, can you give me your cup? 
uh, one, one cup of sweetness to me, can or not, cannot, because this is not material thing. This is um, mentality. Sati is mentality. Then how to understand mentality? Because mentality is something that you cannot touch. Have no form. Still possible. Huh? Otherwise, Buddha will not say Nama and Rupa. Buddha is the one liberated from Nama and Rupa from the material world and mentality world. And Buddha is the one can differentiate detail, different kind of, different ingredient of material, uh, mentality. That's why we say Buddha is great. Maybe in our, uh, in our culture, we only limit to maybe happy or sadness or satisfied or unsatisfied or greedy. But in Buddha teaching is more detailed. We understand mentality is more detailed. Buddha can differentiate, can know everyone what is the cause, what is the, what is the, what is the, what is the, uh, mental factor from their mental process, then only we can solve the problem. And in the Sutta say the Buddha is like someone, when Buddha, you give a cup of water from Ganges water, from Ganges river, and then Buddha know where's the water come from, from which river. This is Buddha mind, we say Panya, wisdom. So sati is uh, mentality. So to understand this mentality is not easy. Otherwise, uh, it, but if we don't know what is, do, we don't recognize this mentality, we don't know how to practice mindfulness. Apilapana lakana, not floating away. Sati in our mind, always help us not floating away the object with wholesome mind. If today we leave our mind with wholesome, okay, today we have very beautiful morning, we listen Dharma talk, we switch our mind to mindfulness because we have mindfulness because we are mind always with my wholesome mind. This is the function of sati. Uh, this is the function of so this is characteristic characteristic is you see this mind not floating away from the object with my with wholesome mind not floating away from the object with wholesome mind this is mindfulness not floating away this is the characteristic okay then we understand the characteristic of mindfulness is not floating away with mindfulness. Okay, this is first one, explanation of mindfulness. The second one, the next one, the function. Second one, function of mindfulness. Yes. Asamoha rasa. Asamoha rasa. This mindfulness, we want to check mindfulness. This mindfulness is absent of confusion. It means it's not confused. Non forgetfulness is never forget, always remember. Uh, we are not this kind of people, we always forget. We say, Okay, okay, start from today. I want to be kind to my wife. Morning, early morning, we say like this, and then afternoon, we see ah, the old habit come. I want to change my wife, and then I scold her. So we forget already because we are not mindful with our family member. The function of mindfulness is to help us not forget, not forget all the wholesome thing, wholesome mind, not forget. If you are always forgetful to do something with kusala mind, kusala is wholesome mind, that means 
with lack of suspect. All the dharma absence of sati is equal to unwholesome mind. All the unwholesome mind have, has no sati, has no mindfulness. So this is the function of mindfulness. If we have mindfulness, then every mind moment, everything we are doing, always helping us. Helping us, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. We doing whatever we do, we do with wholesome mind. So this mindfulness comes from our mind, not other people. In the Buddha, the Jing Buddha said, we change our mind. We always watch our mind first. Then only we can change other. Huh? We don't forget to watch our mind first. Then only we can change others. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Last week, my Kapia telling me, Sally, I found that huh? Buddhists are huh, is worse than other non-Buddhists because Buddhists they always want to change others. <laughs> they want to change others because they know a lot of theory. <laughs> they know they, they listen many Dharma talk and then they, <laughs> they want to change other, they want to change other. During my I I when I was in the university, my housemate they go to attend uh one retreat called mindfulness, mindfulness retreat. And then during the retreat, uh, Bande always remind them, be mindful, be mindful, be mindful. The whole day is use a microphone to remind them mindful, mindful. And then when my housemate uh, finished the retreat, uh, came home to our house, <laughs> She every day looking at me, say, you are not mindful. <laughs> you should be mindful. <laughs> this is what she learned from the retreat. <laughs> this is what she learned from Bante. Because <laughs> Bante, during the retreat, always remind the meditator, be mindful, be mindful. And then she going home, she remind me, you must be mindful. I become a meditator. You must be mindful. And then she scold me, you must be mindful. Then who is not mindful? Huh? If we forget our mind, when they want, if we forget our mind, if, if we forget our mind to put our mind in wholesome minds, then we are not mindful. Even we are scolding others, we are not mindful. So the Buddha teaching is we first to watch our mind first. We checking our mind first. What's the condition of our mind? Then after we satisfied with our teaching, we can control our mind, we can walk, we can set our minds in wise attention, then only we try to change others. Otherwise, our main our main duty is to watch our mind first. If we are always mindful, sure, the people surrounding us, they will be mindful also from your body speak body from your body action from your speech from your mental actions they will influence by you by the parami if they have parami if they see you practicing mindfulness then they will change so the next one the third one the third one is many expectations of mindfulness is araka pachu patana visaya bimukha bawa pachu patana Guard our mind, guard, guardianship of mind and object. This mindfulness, this sati is always like the like uh guard, a guard, huh, always uh, help us in wholesome mind to bring our mind in wholesome mind, checking like a guard, uh, prevent agusala, prevent unwholesome mind. It's, uh, in the department, uh, in the door, in the main gate, they have two guards standing there. Or oh, if strangers or anyone is uh, look strange and uh, not allowed to enter to the apartment, 
same is a sati mindfulness sati. If uh, unwholesome mind, all the evil thoughts, all the evil thoughts prevented to enter our mental process. This is the mindfulness. This is the uh, manifestations of mindfulness. Always guard our minds. Always guard our mind from the evil thoughts to come in our mental process. Then we say, oh, we, we understand. Now we understand. We have mindfulness. If today my mind is uh, always in the wholesome mind, we see people with uh, uh, metta, karuna, then we have a good day. So today we say we have mindfulness. Because we always got our mind. Then we can check. Then we can check our mind, whether our mind have mindfulness or not by this way. This is... Uh, this is almost similar, but the a little bit different uh, sense. Uh, uh, the araka, araka is uh, you. You can araka is uh, you see they are working. The mind is working as the guardianships. This is mindfulness. Okay. Then, if not understand, then we can discuss later. Then the fourth one about mindfulness. Proximate cause of mindfulness. Proximate cause of mindfulness is, uh, the Buddha says the foundations, the foundations of mindfulness. The foundation of mindfulness is the Kira Sanya Padatthana. Padatthana, Padatthana is foundations. Dayadi Satipatthana Padatthana. Very strong, very firm perceptions to four foundations of mindfulness. If when uh, we really want to practice mindfulness, we have uh, we refer to the Mahasati Patthana Sutta. This the proximate cause of mindfulness is. Uh, I think most of you already know about this. We say Kaya Nupasana, Vedana Nupasana, Jitta Nupasana, and Dhamma Nupasana. Buddha divide to this foundation of mindfulness divide to. This four chapter, Kaya, Vedana, Chetta, and Dhamma. In Kaya already, Buddha use uh, some method like Anapana, Iriyapatthana. Iriyapatthana is four body posture, Sampajana, and Patikula Manasikara. Patikula is uh, the attention to the bond, our bond. Dato Manasakara. Manasikara and Nawasivati Kapata. This is a uh, uh, channel grounds observations. And the next one is uh, Vinana is feelings and Chitta is all the mind, subject and Dhamma. Dhamma, we can say Nivarana. Nivarana is five hindrances. Kanda is five aggregate. Ayatana, uh, Bojanga, Satcha, Papam. And four noble truths also included in the Dhamma Nupasana. So it's not easy uh, to practice uh, mindfulness. All this is the foundations of mindfulness. So for, for the practitioner who, who are really apply mindfulness, their mind, the foundation of their mind, their manasikara is always in uh, this subject. For example, I give you one example. <clears throat> Some meditator, not only meditator, if they are a Dharma practitioner, they train our mind with the uh, Mahasati, with uh, great mindfulness. When they see other beings, when they see other beings, maybe they, they always see particular manasikala. Particular is uh, repulsiveness or skeleton, white bone. Huh? Some of my friends, we've practiced in the forest because uh, we already become a habit. Whoever appears in front of us, we see only white bone. We see no one in the world. 
or repulsiveness or skeleton. You see this one is skeleton, skeleton, the whole world is skeleton, including included uh, animal world also repulsiveness, included the um, animal world. We can see if we emphasize the white bond, bond, we see the birds now, the bird is singing. We see bird is not bird, it's only bond. So it's only bond. And then, okay, when, when we practice this, maybe one day I have chance to teach you one meditations, then we can practice particular skeleton. Now, I like this because if we switch our mind to skeleton, mindfulness is skeleton, we see no one in the world. And then we go to working, we go to work, you still can differentiate. This is manager, this is clerk, this is assistant. Uh, but when you talk to them, all this concept come back. You see manager, this is my boss. You're, you have, still can differentiate who is who. But most of the time, if you switch your mind to particular manasikara, you can see the whole office, the whole company, they are only particular. Then you have no department, you have no craving, you have no hatred because all the people are same. Okay, is it possible to practice like this nowadays? Possible, possible, possible. By only this way, we can, we only can remove our suffering. Otherwise, we are suffering day by day, and then our world is full of sufferings all the time. So today is only very brief introduction about mindfulness. So I think you all have the answer already. What is not mindfulness? If I introduce what is mindfulness, then in your mind you know all. Oh, I have no mindfulness. So we check ourselves. Are we mindfulness day by day, every day in our daily life? No. Most of people know mindful. Buddhists or non-Buddhists, we are not mindful. Why? Because we always associate with not mindfulness. We read from the news, we read from the, our Facebook, our anything in the social media. Oh, it's not mindful. Then we don't know what is mindfulness. Then we act also not mindful. Huh? And then we say the world is full of suffering. Then if we don't want to practice mindful, then how to liberate, liberate it from the world? Impossible. Huh? Impossible. Then after 20 years, I come back to Malaysia. I feel that oh, many changes. Many changing these two years. Many people in suffering because we are very far from mindfulness. Huh? Very far from mindfulness. So the last, okay, the conclusion. Do they come to the conclusion today? Just briefly, what is not mindfulness? All, all against Sila Samari Panya is not mindfulness. Huh? Only Sila Samari Panya, we are practiced Sila Samari Panya, then we can say you are mindfulness. And not for the purifications of mind, it's not mindfulness. And against eight, four, eight noble fast, also not mindfulness. And not leading our mind free from Sokapari Dewa, Sokapari Dewa is suffering, it's not mindfulness also. And whatever we do, not lead to the not lead, to, not lead to Nibbana, also not mindful. So in brief, all akusala, all unwholesome is a mental factor is sati. If we know how to check our mind, in our mind is no sati, the absence of sati. All the unwholesome minds, no sati. All the sensual attachment, also no sati. All hatred mind, also no sati. And all delusion mind, also no sati. Also no mindfulness. Huh? So uh, this is my conclusions. Uh, I don't know how much you are understanding and can absorb from this today's dharma. Hopefully, I... But 
hopefully I can make you all aware what you are practicing and hopefully I can help you all reflect uh, day by day after 20 years I become a Buddhist, after 30 years I become a Buddhist, 40 years am I mindful? Hmm? Am I mindful? When I performing uh, monastery job, monastery work as work as a monastery worker, am I mindful? So uh, this is uh, just brief introduction. Huh? Just brief introduction. We say if the Buddha Buddha teaching. We say if the Buddha Dhamma, the Buddha wisdom is like oceans, like oceans. What we understanding is not even one drop of water. Hmm? So when we say the mindfulness is like oceans, it's a very deep subject to understanding. Then what we understand today, not even one drop of water oceans and drop water. So just a little bit we know about mindfulness. Huh? Mm. I think is enough for today. And uh, that is, uh, is there any question? No, it's 11, 10 minutes. Yeah, Bobby? Yeah. Uh, any question from you? Thank you, Sally, for the wonderful sharing. And uh, <clears throat> thank you for being very, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> very few speakers will be like, <clears throat> so direct, like Sally, very good. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, you know, what, okay. Am I do the, some, uh, uh, have any wrong speech or hurt anyone? I'm s apologize for it. <laughs> no, I think it's good. It's good. Uh, Sally, uh, those who are listening in from Facebook, Kindly write your questions in the comments and we'll pick up your questions and give it, post it to Sally. So uh, please keep your questions coming in. We have about uh, 20 minutes for questions. So Sally, uh, maybe Sally can explain uh, further about uh, when, when a person practices, how does a person know when he's mindful or not? I mean, just now you covered in your talk, but uh, any of the characteristics of mindfulness? We can check by, um, maybe this way, very easy way. Uh, so if you are a meditator, then I will ask them, uh, how is your feeling after uh, meditate one hour? And then maybe they, they will say, uh, most of the problem is craving. When we want to do something, we do with craving. And craving cannot bring the results to, cannot bring the result to uh, Kusala way. Kusala is wholesome mind. So they will more suffer. They will feel more suffer. And then all the suffer feeling in the feeling, okay, we can check feeling, domanasa. The feeling is domanasa. Unhappy feeling. Unpleasant feeling. If you feel sad, is it sukha happy? No. It will bring the result. We very feel every upset, unhappy, dominasa feeling. We say dominasa feeling. Then we are not mindful. Mindful is wholesome. My wholesome mind can bring only two feelings. Either is equanimous. Equanimous is feeling or happiness feeling. So if someone, they always feel uh, unhappy the whole day from morning to night and feel a uh, suffering and feel unhappy unsatisfied all this is unmindful i think this is very easy to understand huh? mm. thank you sally still waiting for questions from facebook post mm. Sally, is any advice for lay practitioners about how to cultivate mindfulness in our day-to-day -day life? Okay. All of us have 24 hours. Maybe spend some time for Dhamma. 
spend time for meditation, even 20 minutes a day. Otherwise, we say we are very busy, everyone is busy, and then until die also busy. So please, please, maybe 20 minutes for listening Dharma, maybe uh, just let go. Lah, because we are so craving, we are so attached to and many things, so we have no time. This is my advice to lay persons. Otherwise, time pass very fast and then we don't know where is our next destinations this is very important most of this most of us is we have uh, ignorance minds a lot of ignorance avija we don't know we don't feel any urgencies to improve to change ourselves we don't feel because we don't know how is the result if we know the result is is bad result, then we have to avoid. Some people, we don't know, we don't believe future life. So they don't practice. So why I have to accumulate punya, marriage, now from now? They don't practice. Mm, they don't practice. I have one medit I have one lay person, after I explained to him how important to perform, to perform good deeds, start from today. So we have not enough time. After that, as he said, he said every day before working, he go to the temple in Penang. Any temple, he just doing offerings. Because he said, oh, he understand already. When we understand, we really understand the needs of Dharma from now, only then we have actions. We have no action because we don't see the importance to doing this. We don't feel the urgency, the need to doing this. Because we cannot read. The future, we have our mind is not enough wisdom to know the future. We know the next de destination. We, even we don't know tomorrow. We don't know doing this will bring a bad result for tomorrow. We are so ignorant. That means that's why we have we feel no urgency and no necessity want to do the good deeds from now. Yeah. I already forget what your question answer your, your question. <laughs> so we should, we should, uh, Sally okay, maybe can understand. Uh, uh -huh. uh, maybe I, I Sally can okay. Okay, okay, okay. Say to Bobby say. Yeah, maybe Sally can uh share how to create that sense of urgency uh, so that we practice. Oh, okay. Okay. The sense of urgency can we can know from the Sutta, the Buddha's one, the Buddha always mentions it's a rare opportunity for all beings to come to the human world, to visit human world. It's a very rare opportunity to become a human. And then most of the beings they visit the human just a while. After that, all the beings will go to woeful state. This is uh, truth. This is true. We when when we talk about the mental process, huh, in the law of karma, only we can maintain wholesome mind. Then we can born in sugati. Sugati is a happiness realm. If we cannot maintain wholesome mind. And then this mental process is uh, continuing, continuing. And then when uh, this life, when this life comes to the end, we cannot maintain the wholesome mind. So our next destination is unwholesome, unwholesome brand. Unwholesome is, uh, we say, woeful state. Because woeful state, why we say woeful state? Woeful state, uh, we say animal, gods, this is only concept. But in the ultimate truth is uh, all the akusala, akusala, akusala mental process will go, will ripen in the woeful state. We lost our body as a human body. And then this mental process will bring us to the woeful state. So if we have no urgency, we become a habit, the wrong speech. Uh. Whatever we want to talk, we talk with are uh, not mindful. 
we want the angry, angry, anger, a lot of anger, and then a lot of craving already, already become a habit, habitual karma, we say. When we already become a habit until the end of this life, this will become a habit of soul. So the next is bad definition. When we think, when we know this, uh, the truth, uh, Buddha said noble truth. When we understand this noble truth, then we have urgency. When we have urgency, because uh, we said when we do investments, the good investment will bring the good results. But this unwholesome mind is the seed, uh, unwholesome seed. They were never deleted. It will bring result in the future. Even every single unwholesome thought will bring the result in the future. When we know about this, we will always guard our minds from unwholesome deep, unwholesome thought, unwholesome mind. This is called diligent meditator, diligent Buddhist. Diligent Buddhist, we always prevent our mind, all the evil thoughts coming. Because we understand the law of karma, all the evil thoughts will bring result to evil results. Will make us very suffering in the future. Don't you feel our world suffer? Because all is, you, we already accumulate a lot of unwholesome mind and then it will be right. And even external, external also influenced by our thoughts also. Then if we understand this, then we have urgency. Then we only that we can say we are diligent in practice. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you, Sally. If, yeah. if, uh, if we look from the mathematically speaking, uh, most of the time, if we have more negative than positive thoughts, then what Sally says is probably go more to negative, right? And woeful realms, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe more associated to more mindful people. Uh, if we, we check ourselves, we have more negative energy, yeah. Uh, we don't associate with uh, people with negative energy. Mm. We uh, associate with more good friends, more uh, that can motivate us, can encourage us, then uh, slowly we will change. Mm. This okay. mention in the Buddha teaching is a very important, association is very important. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Sally. There are four questions from Facebook. One is, what is the difference between craving towards sotapanna and aspiring towards sotapanna? Craving to sotapanna, aspiring to sotapanna, expiring, expiring. Um, okay, is uh, no. We can expire some something expired, but all the expirations will associate with the. Avidya also ignorance mind also. But we cannot craving. We cannot crave. Craving is attachment. Attachment, um, attachment cannot bring result to good result. Expirations can, but expiration also not yet remove all the Akusala mind. I, for example, uh, give, give you another example. Uh, um, normally, some people they expire, they expire this life, they become, a, for example, they become a, okay, become a, a doctor. When they expire, become doctor, this life, next life, I want to become a doctor. And then when they expire, they have avija, they have wrong view. They have wrong view because they're thinking that is the doctor. This is avija. In the truth, this is avija. This is avijja. So when they become a sotapan, the sotapan is not by expiration. They must have enough wisdom. If they expire only, they might not become a sotapan because sotapan in what we call sotapan in the cause is their wisdom. We say sotapan uh, mecca arise the wisdom of the sotapan arise when the wisdom of sotapan arise this wisdom this panya will cut off all the deformers go to the woeful stage the main point is they cut off the wrong view deeply why because they already cultivate their wisdom until they already cultivate their wisdom until uh 
see no beings in the world. They understand all is fire aggregate, but they still have some defilement for satapan, but they already understand the Buddha teaching. Actually, is no being in the world. All is only uh, fire aggregate. All being is only conditions of wholesome and unwholesome result. And then they understand about this. They remove their wrong view. And at the time, their wisdom is sharp enough to cut off all the delusions my all the delusions mind will bring them to the woeful state why uh, we say a uh, cut off the delusion is most of our defilement is because we have so strong the cling to the will the our wrong will is uh, strong especially uh the dity we can say we believe there's a self self center in the easy, easy word is a self-centered. Everyone is self-centered. They're important, they feel important of themselves. This is all the putu jana mind. Putu jana mind is ordinary mind and the Arya mind is a noble person mind. Noble person mind, they have no mecha, they, they, they have they already removed this sakya, sakaya diti because they understand. So they are very generous. They are very willing to help others. They are not selfish, especially selfish. Because when they they own, they know if they own a lot of property, this property also not belong to them. They are only using this is all, it's only conditions. Because they already removed their sakya diti and then in the Ordinary persons, most uh, the whole world, uh, the whole world, uh, we the whole world almost uh, we are put to jana. Yes, very strong self center. This is mine. This is my land. This is my house. This is my wife. This is my my son, my daughter. And then they emphasize my my country. And then they have fighting with each other because they have very strong wrong view. Huh. Then. This is the most dangerous song. So this is the most dangerous. So is it still possible to practice, to become a Sotapan possible? Possible if we practice Sila Samadhi, Panya step by step, uh, practice Samatha and Vipassana step by step, it's still possible to remove our dignity. The important thing is uh, to remove our wrong view. We need to solve this problem. This is like a disease need to be removed from our mind. But need the time, maybe you have, you have to spend about a long time to practice this. Uh, most of the people, their problem is they cannot let go their life. They cannot let, let go their conditions, so they cannot spend some time, more time for from Dhamma. Yeah. This is, I think this is the, uh, the main problem from the lay person. Yeah. Okay, I think it's you, very Sally. close to 11.26 my clock now. I think it's enough now. Uh, because yeah. I would like to do a very one minute or two minutes chanting and sharing, sharing merits to end these sections. Okay, I think okay. enough questions. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you, Sally. Uh, okay. Then after I chanting and sharing many uh, sharing merit, then I give back to uh, Bobby and then just ending our sections. Okay. Yambadam kosalam tasa no bawe na pani no sabe satama rajasa na to adamam sukta waham. Apunantu visudaya sukaya pati patiya asoka manupaya sani bana sukamotama erandi dato satamo dame hondo sagarawa abeti satakalena samadeva pawasatu Yatara kintu porana surajano tate vimam. Rajara kantu damena atanova pajam pajam. By the power of whatever wholesome mind, wholesome mind, 
Wholesome state attained by me may all beings be free from suffering. May the Dharma remain for a long time. May all beings respect the Dharma. May the rain fall rightly and timely. Imaya Dhamma no Dhamma Pati Pati Abodham Pujemi. Imaya Dhamma no Dhamma Pati Pati Abodham Pujemi. Imaya Dhamma no Dhamma Pati Pati Abodham Pujemi. Ata Imaya Pati Pati Jati Jala Biyati Maraha Pari Muchi Sami. We pay homage to the Buddha Dhamma Sankha. By this practice, I will be free from birth, old age, sickness, and death. Idame punyam asawakiam waham hotu. Idame punyam mi banasapatayo hotu. Mama punya bagam sabasatanam pachemi. Te sabe me samam punya bagam labantu. I share my marriage done today with all beings. May all those beings get an equal share of marriage shared by me. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, BGF. Thank you, all of you.